About two weeks ago, this channel hit 500 subscribers, which gave me access to YouTube's community tab. Now I can let y'all decide how these milestones should be celebrated, and it appears a good majority wanted to hear me spin a few yarns and tell some stories about the adventures I've had in my one year rail fanning. I'll start off with a story about what I guess you could call poor city planning or poor infrastructure maintenance. So this happened while I was at the old Santa Fe Depot. I was actually getting this footage that you see here. From the ledge I'm standing on, you can't see the signals, but I needed to see them to make sure that a train was on the way. So I basically parkoured my way down from this 12 foot tall ledge. I had to grab onto a 2 inch wide metal bar sticking out from a wall so that I could stretch my legs down as far as possible in order to stand on a dumpster that was on the ground. As you can see in the footage, I had to walk through some tall grass before I could get to the tracks. So I walked down there and checked the signals, and the train's indeed on the way. While I'm standing there, I hear a faint horn, which means I got about five minutes to hightail it back to my camera. So I take off running and I get about five steps in when I plant my foot on the ground and stop on a dime. Because right in front of me is a giant metal grate. It looked like one of those things at the entrance to a cow pasture, but the space in between the metal tubes was much wider. It was certainly wide enough for, oh, I don't know, someone to fall into or get their legs stuck in. Did I mention that this grate was sitting atop a huge water-filled pit? that you couldn't see the bottom of, and was also almost completely hidden by tall grass, there was no caution tape or no sign anywhere. It was basically a pitfall trap in the weeds that you wouldn't know was there unless you were falling in it or staring right at it. Let's see, what else I got? Oh, this is the story of how I learned a valuable lesson in rail fanning, where if you have a spot picked out and have no reason to move, stay put. So this is one of the first rail fanning trips I ever went on. I was actually at the old loading dock when a mixed freight comes on track two as per usual. But for whatever reason, I wanted to get photos of this train again. I don't even think there was even anything special on it. Regardless, I drive about a mile down the road where I find myself sitting at an intersection looking at the tracks. And it's while I'm sitting here that the crossing gates illuminate for the train that's gonna pass on track one. In this train's lash up was a Cascade Green GP30. I knew that was a huge missed opportunity when I saw the train pass from my truck and didn't have my camera ready. But it cuts me even deeper now, cause number one, GP30s are a rare locomotive on BNSF. And number two, I haven't seen a Cascade Green GP30 since that day. But if I would've stayed put and just been patient, I would've caught it. So moral of the story, don't friggin' move. Speaking of the area around the loading dock, this reminds me of a rather scary interaction I had once. So it's evening time around sundown, and I'm standing at this electrical box looking north waiting on a train. And I stood there for a little bit, and then I got this feeling. You know sometimes when you feel like you should just look over your shoulder? That's the feeling I had. So I look, and about 30 foot away from me is a man dressed in a black hoodie black sweatpants, hands in his pockets, staring directly at me walking forward. I'm concerned now. Keep in mind, there was no one else around. We were alone. I see this guy has his hands in his sweatshirt pocket, and I don't know if he's armed, you know, I don't know if he's holding a gun or a knife in there, you just don't know. Regardless, this guy continues to walk towards me, staring at me the entire time. At this point, we've probably been staring at each other for about five seconds, but it felt way longer in my mind. I don't know why, but I, I felt like I had to say something. I couldn't just let this threatening guy walk towards me and do nothing. So I put on my, my customer service voice, and I tried to sound as neutral as possible. I ask him, can I help you, sir? And he says, nothing. He just keeps walking and keeps staring. Now I'm planning my escape. I'm, I'm thinking if this guy tries anything, I'm ditching all my equipment and making a break for the sidewalk below. But he's still about 15 foot out, so I ask again, is there anything I can do for you, sir? In hindsight, really, I, I shouldn't have just stood there. 
I, I should have done something, but I'd, I'd never been in this situation before. This is this is the first time something like that had happened to me in my life. I didn't know I didn't know what to do. So so I asked, you know, is there anything I can do for you, sir? Still, no response until he gets about ten foot from me and just says, No nah, man. And then he takes a left and walks off towards the sidewalk. After he left, I was just thinking to myself, what would that guy have done if I hadn't turned around? and he could have just walked right up to me and caught me off guard. After that interaction, I left. I called it a night. I wasn't about to be hanging around with that guy in the area. And the next few times I went rail fan in there, I brought a box blade with me. I never saw that guy again, but I think it's safe to say that interaction shook me a bit. Let's see. I think after that scary story, it's time for a more comical one. So this happened while I was filming the video about the local freight on the war bonnet. So I'm standing there watching this train go back and forth, when from behind me, I hear a voice yell this. It was a very haggard old man on a bicycle, who may or may not have been sober. I was concerned when he yelled out to me like that, but he eventually struck up a conversation and turned out to not be so bad. I don't remember much of what he said, because number one, he was a bit of a mumble mouth. And number two, when there's a train right beside you, you can't hear a dang thing over a V16 diesel engine. Either way, he points to the shirt I'm wearing, which is this shirt you see right here. He points to the words New Orleans and asks, you ever been down there? And I tell him, no, I ain't ever been as far south as New Orleans, but I've been to Louisiana plenty of times. I was actually in Shreveport just last week. This was right after I'd filmed the KCS video. And then he starts telling me about the horse races down there. And while he's telling me this, I just have to smile and nod along, because I can't hear or understand a single thing this dude's saying. But the entire time he's talking, he keeps holding his hand up for a fist bump like every 20 seconds. So I'd give him a fist bump, and every time after every one, he'd smile real big, like he was so happy. And then he'd just go back to talking. Eventually he asked me where I'm from, and I say, oh, I'm from here, Oklahoma, but I was born in Well, my words must have gotten distorted over the roar of the train, because the way he heard it, my name, and the town I was born in, rhymed. They don't, but that's just what he heard. So we say our goodbyes, and he's walking away. And as he's walking away, he yells, Marco, Marco from Anadarko. He's going to blow up the train. And I'm just thinking to myself, please don't yell that. <laughs> but everything turned out fine. For my final story, I'd like to share with y'all the fiasco that was catching Norfolk Southern's N&W Heritage Unit. So it's a summer's evening, I had just gotten off work, and I would caught wind that a train was on the way. Since my work was like a mile from the tracks, I figured I'd go down there and catch a train. Keep in mind, I had no idea the N&W Heritage Unit was going to be on there. And I'm sitting in the turn lane at an intersection, probably 500 foot from the railroad, when a train passes over the bridge. It's a train I was looking to catch. One Jeevo goes by, and then another. At this point, I'm thinking, dang, this train couldn't have come at a worse time, but at least there ain't anything special on it. But oh, how I was about to eat those words. The last locomotive comes into view, and as it's passing, I'm thinking to myself, that's an odd shade of blue. It ain't CSX, and it ain't GECX, until I see the N and W logo on the cab. All I could think of was, oh, my God. Well, I have to chase it now. I ain't about to let this slip away. So I take off down the road, and I am neck and neck with this train the entire time. Keep in mind, this was a Z train, so it ain't about to be stopping. My only saving grace was that it had to stop because it needed a crew change. So I'm pulling up to the crew change spot, and as I'm driving under the tracks, the train is driving over them. I really wanted to find a spot on the western side of the tracks so I could get the sun on the locomotives. 
So I drive around the city and get horribly lost. I'm in a tizzy now. I just keep thinking, I've come all this way, used all this gas, and done all this stressing. If I miss this train now, I might just cry. I'm still driving around, just trying to get back to the frickin' railroad tracks now, when I check my sources to see if the train was still stationary. And to my horror, it was on the move. I'm floored now, but by some dumb luck, I found a gravel patch by the tracks. It wasn't on the western side, but I didn't care at this point. I'd rather have crummy video than no video at all. And just as the sun was setting, not two minutes after I put my truck in park, the Z train with the N and W Heritage unit came rolling through. And I never wanted to have a rough and an experience like that again. Well, I hope y'all like my stories, and I hope it was everything y'all thought it was gonna be. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of y'all for 500 subs and well beyond. 500 subs is a milestone that I thought was years away, but y'all made it come leaps and bounds sooner. Also, you can probably expect a thousand subscriber special before the end of the year. No guarantees though. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time.